things like AI and cryptocurrency, NFTs, the metaverse, uh, all of these new things have essentially created um, circumstances that our laws feel uh, or look incapable of addressing without significant amendments. That, then again, uh, these, these developments are touching pretty much every aspect of our lives, not just the professional ones. If you have children, you know this. Um, my kid is is on in the metaverse or in his video games all the time and wants to buy virtual pairs of shoes and all that stuff, um, where you are asking yourself, what is this kind of new uh, engagement form that, that our next generation is growing up in? Um, but... On the in the legal field and just focusing on our uh, let's say uh, field of expertise, um, there are a few basic questions also that have gotten upended with these new technologies. Things like registration of rights, uh, things like use of rights and enforcement of rights, territoriality, etc. All of this is pretty much has been um, put in question by these new developments. So uh, let me start off by asking um, all of you whether you have encountered any of these new technologies in your recent court cases, whether in your day-to-day -day practice you have been sort of exposed to this, um, to this advancement. Yes, thank you so much. I think the issue of AI, Inteligencia artificial, as we say in, in Spanish, is a big challenge for the uh, intellectual property community. Particularly, it's very important in the field of copyright law, if I may say, and the development of, uh, of the practice of law. But I will uh, keep myself into the field of, of copyright law, where as far as I'm concerned, there has been a case being uh, uh, put into the, comp the, the competition intellectual property authority where a lot of things will be are being discussed. Who is the owner? Uh, what are the rights of the of the authors being uh, infringed? Because it's really funny. This is a, is, a, is a book that has was released. And uh, the inspiration of the books were several that were published before, that, that were uh, on the web, and that the uh, there were some where the authors believed, so there was a problem for them, and the other were from authors which uh, they had already died. So now at this point, uh, the case has been. Uh, submitted to to the uh, intellectual property in, uh, office of Peru, and I believe it will be a very big, 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 big case uh, in the future. What I believe is that uh, the current uh, intellectual property laws, and specifically copyright law, I think that are at least from the Stand, standpoint of the Andean community, decision three, four, five are is sufficient to deal with the issue. You know, usually this kind of legislation is quite general, and uh, the rights are there. The question, and I believe that that will be the, the 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 what will happen in the future, is that developments will be from the uh, case law, and judges will have a very important role to to in this matter I, I think that the developments will be going so fast that the legislators in our country that love to put their finger on every issue uh won't have the time to to to, to move and to cope the, the the speed speediness in which all these issues are are being moved so i, I believe that the judge made law will take a very relevant part in the fields. And that will happen also with, uh, with, with, um, with, uh, with trademarks and with patents. 
because there's a possibility nowadays that I, 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 e will be able to create utility models and that, that will seek a problem. And uh, that uh, I don't know whether trademark, because there's always the possibility of, of, of using AI for trying to see whether there are conflicts or not, and there are similarities that will help the, 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 the practice. But in the fields of, of patents and in the fields of, of copyright, I think that we will have a big, big, big problem. And I repeat, because the legislative process will be very slow, at the end, I think judges' responsibilities will be uh, at the utmost. That's what I wanted to say at this point. Thank you. Uh, as you know, I don't work with violation, with IP violations. Uh, only with IP uh, nullities and validity cases. But I was talking uh, some like a month or two uh, ago with a state judge, with a colleague of us, uh, and she works with IP here in Rio de Janeiro. And she was mentioning a case which I found it it's very interesting. It's about the famous writer, Nora Roberts. Now, she's very yes. famous for uh, lots of romantic books and so on. And she is she has filed a copyright infringement last week here in Brazil against a, a Brazilian woman. And Nora Roberts is accusing her of plagiarism. Mm -hmm. She uh, plagiarized her works in, uh, she says it is in a scandalous way. Now she, uh, Nora Roberts is asking for damages of 3,000 times the value of her highest sale price. Wow. And she says that if she wins, she will donate the amount <laughs> to a literacy program in Brazil. But what, what I find very interesting in, the, in this case, that it's not recent. So this, this woman in Brazil, she actually uh, took parts of books of Nora Roberts, man, and then she made it, and she combined the, the books. Uh, but she made it not with AI. So imagine, and, and the judge is facing a, a very big problem because she doesn't know how to determine if it's violation, if it's plagiarism, how much of the, of the book has to be a literal violation. It's very difficult to, to because the, the, the Brazilian woman says it was only inspirational. It's not plagiarism, it's inspirational, like something, something like that. But it's a case that was not made with AI. Imagine we, when we have AI making books, and it is, now it is, it's making books, it's making songs, it's making pictures and it, we are having advertisement. We have songs played by people who are dead. Uh, <sighs> we have here in Brazil, we, we had a, a, a case that everybody is talking about. A very uh, important, a very important singer in Brazil. I don't know if you know her. I, it's Elise Regina. Yes. Mm -hmm. She died many years ago, and they put her in a combi, aquele carro, combi. Mm -hmm. They put her in a combi, mm -hmm. singing with her daughter. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. In advertisement for this, for these cars, for combi. Mm -hmm. And people were like crazy here in Brazil. Because they said, no, and Regina would not agree with that. She was not commercial and this and that. And people uh, arguing and wanting to determine 
what she would have done if she was mm -hmm. alive. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And what are the boundaries for the, nah, the for the family? Yeah. What are the boundaries? Do they have boundaries? And we had some artists here saying that they wouldn't allow their writing, their wills to say they they don't. I think that maybe my Madonna do that, mm -hmm. uh, writing her wills to say I don't authorize that my face, my body and anything is, is used before I'm, de I'm dead. So I, I think we don't know the challenges we are about to, to face, to have to face. And yeah. I think that maybe uh, we can think about having discussions and maybe thinking about uh, international agreements and instruments to discuss these things. But the truth is that we don't know yet where we are going. We don't know what the future reserves for us. And we have to, to be very careful. When is this case, uh, this Nora Roberts case, going to be decided? Do you know? No, I don't know. Because it's true that what you say, it's 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 pretty much the human version of AI, right? Looking for previous uh, sources and then collating what you find in those sources to create something new, which is now some of the lawsuits concerning AI are by the artists who are or content creators who are claiming that their content was used to produce these new uh these new works um there are quite a few lawsuits i believe out there um against this kind of generative i think it's called ai mm -hmm. um on how they have to disclose whether and how they have to disclose the sources used and what the copyright uh, implications are of this. But the, this case is uh, from 2019, and it interesting. Doesn't <laughs> and it doesn't have a decision yet. I'll be a company if I have a decision. I share yes. with you. Yes, that would be great. So uh, we have a case in India uh, involving uh, non-fungible tokens. Uh, which dealt with the uh, uh, digital player uh, player cards. You know, our, uh, our cricket is a very famous game. And uh, a, a company signed a few cricketers and said, we have the exclusive right to prepare their digital cards, which could be purchased by people. And someone, some other company without any authorization from the player uh, also came out with similar cards. And they said it was fair use. So that issue is pending over the division bench. The single judge has taken a view which the appellant says uh, is a very constricted or a very narrow view with regard to personality rights. So see, what we are finding is that uh, it will be judge-made law to the extent that these issues will have to be dealt with. But this is also leading to a lot of... Uh, I would say jurisdictional and jurisprudential conflicts. Because uh, see, one doesn't know where to sue, what should be the place of action. Because uh, you are dealing with, uh, uh, with, uh, 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 with, a, with a frontier which has no boundaries. You know, you're, you're online, the transaction could be happening anywhere in the world. So where would the suit be filed? No one has any clarity. and. Uh, the downside of this will be that uh, people will start choosing jurisdictions where they think the play, where the plaintiff thinks he can get a favorable order. So there'll be a lot of forum shopping which will take place. And courts are not going to take a uniform, consistent view with regard to this technology or with regard to the rights which are involved. How will you deal with this issue? You know, because it's going to lead to a lot of conflict all over. Uh, even with regard to personality rights, for instance, there is a wide uh, uh, difference of opinion in US 
and UK courts. They're taking uh, divergent views. Now, this is a major issue which will have to be resolved. I really don't know uh, how will we ensure that a uniform, consistent view is taken over a period of time. And uh, it is not necessary that emerging technologies uh, will fit neatly on the current legal structure as we have. You know, there, there is going to be a wide uh, divergence of views. For instance, uh, even take a small issue like standard essential patents of Fran, you know, which is in the old world. You find different courts have taken different views mm -hmm. and people will be going to different jurisdictions uh, according to their convenience. So conflict of laws will be a major issue. The mm -hmm. other thing is a company which is developing this technology, the brand owner, as it were, uh, he will not know which law applies because this does not have boundaries. So it is also got to do with ease of doing business. How will he do his business? He doesn't know the, the law, the principles on which he has to operate on. So there are various uh, intrinsic issues, fundamental issues that are arising for consideration. And if the countries cannot agree on some basic harmonious principles, there is going to be a conflict of law. Mm -hmm. Is this the end of territoriality? It looks like, because looks like, I, 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 for me, boundaries have ceased to exist and uh, IPRs, which are considered territorial laws, they're, they're, their basic concept is in danger. Fully agree. If I may, I would also join the discussion and I, I also completely agree because in the metaverse, there is a very new specificity. If we take uh, internet as we know it until now, uh, we already had these questions concerning territoriality in, I don't know, IMS Nevi mm -hmm. or recently in Learn and See on it for uh, 22, but which still has to deal with uh, content which is somehow specific to a certain country. So you can find that the product is sold to a certain territory, or maybe you use meta tags from the territory, uh, which is of your competitor, and then you have uh, infringement issues in trademark law. But now with the new metaverse, uh, if we take that already today, there are some 150 words, meta words, which are working and they are truly global. It's it's uh, more or less impossible to say that they are only focusing on the United States or only on one part of Europe. Uh, so I, I agree that uh, this is one of the problems. And the second is that uh, in my view, we will have to globalize um, also the solutions, let's say now in the misclassification, uh, as far as I understand, there are some ongoing uh, discussions as to the new terms in the alphabetical order to take into account all the possibilities for the NFTs, maybe how to use uh, the classification for the metaverse. There are some uh, very new developments at the EUIPO, which uh, proposes uh, certain new guidelines for 2023, which are still currently under discussion, I think until October, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, there are the first cases coming, but still on the level, uh, I'm speaking of Europe, uh, more um, of the administration at the EUIPO, so not so much yet uh, at the general court. There are some cases in uh, national states. You, you have a Juventus case uh, in Italy in front of the Italian courts, which was also very similar in my understanding to what was already mentioned. Uh, uh, so, so also sporting uh, tickets and uh, the Juve trademark and who is having the right to, to use that. Um, but I would say that uh, the most interesting issue for, for me, uh, at least now, is how far we will divide the metaverse word from uh, the usual word. Uh, so not so much how you protect the trademarks which do already exist and then are transposed, transposed by somebody to the metaverse, but what will we be doing with the completely new trademark word created directly for the metaverse for the nfts and i will finish another interesting question is how the blockchain use uh, will be taken as a profitable tool by the ip offices you have at the ipo the, the project i don't know like the ip registration in blockchain there are if i understand four or five states um, who already are dealing with this, uh, which will be very he helpful to see the history, for example, of, of designs on the market. You can 
even use the artificial intelligence to, to find uh, what's the status of, of art uh, if, if you're working in design law. So I think all of these questions finally will have to be decided globally because it's really impossible to have another Terry in Europe and another one in the US or anywhere else. So. Okay, until now, there have been very few civil cases about new technologies such as blockchain, NFTs, AI, and metaverse in South Korea. Recently, I had a cryptocurrency case. Uh, the main issue was very simple, contract interpretation, but it was not easy because of a new term. Uh, new term have been created in relation to new technology. What is the token? What is the uh, coin? What is the mainnet? Like that. So, but we don't reach the social or legal consensus on what their exact meanings are. So, also, I cannot find any IP case about uh, this new technology, except Davos case. As you know, Davos case is uh, AI can be an uh, inventor or not. The South Korea court uh, answer is uh, uh, no, AI cannot be inventor. Uh, recently, the chat GPT is a very hard issue in copyright. Uh, I'm the member of the working group by the government about the chat GPT. We studied every month and we will issue some guideline uh, mm -hmm. in a few months. A big issue is um, chat GPT uh, do data mining uh, in the process of data mining. Uh, is it uh, legal or illegal? Such as is it, is it uh, pay use or not like that? And as Andrea said, uh, I, I also think there are may, may be a lot of trade, trademark dispute in Metaverse soon, but very, very soon, yeah. First, the first issue that come to mind is the similarity of product. For example, whether crossing for avatar, downloadable image file of class nine, and crossing in the real world of class 25, the similar or not. Uh, the Supreme Court of Korea determines whether designated product are similar by considering quality, shape, use of product, and actual condition transaction all together. So under the current law, the shape of product is exactly the same, but the purpose of product, sale, consumer, and distribution channel are different. So mm -hmm. it seems uncertain whether they are similar product or not. Uh, and as you know, the Unfair Competition Prevention Act is more flexible. In particular, there are general provision in South Korea Act. So I think uh, trademark in metaverse are more likely to be protected under the, the Unfair Competition Prevention Act. Also, the use of trademark is also uh, international inter interesting topic in Metaverse too. The Supreme Court of Korea recognized internet domain name, internet keyword search, and various internet advertisement as, a, as the use of a trademark. So in this respect, the use of a trademark may, uh, may also be recognized in Metaverse too. Of course, that is as long as the marks function as a source indicator. In terms of infringement, it seems that it will also be an issue whether Metaverse platform operator will be responsible for indirect infringement. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, some people wonder if the judiciary is ready to deal with this technology. Uh, my answer is yes. Ironically, judges are already prepared because judges do not prepare anything until <sighs> a specific cases come to their court. When cases come up, uh, I think we can do it well somehow. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kwangnam. I think that's an that's an important point that 
was raised by a few of you that it's going to be judge made law for a while. But there was also the comment that if the decisions vary too much, then there will be uh, there will be immense amounts of, of uh, forum shopping, especially if we don't know if there is not one global determination of what the correct venue is for these disputes. And as you mentioned, Kuang Nam, there have been there there are many different issues that are arising. Um, it's only a matter of time before the IP courts. Uh, have to deal with these questions of use, of infringement, of similarity, of uh, targeting. Maybe targeting is no longer an issue, Andre. I mean, that's something that in the EU, especially, that was the magic word to determine uh, the applicability or the, the, the authority of European courts. Now, with the metaverse being completely, as they say, interoperable, do we need targeting anymore? It's it's out there. Everybody can access it from anywhere. Um, exactly. The other the other problem is the the first uh, the first location determination would be by uh, venue of the uh, defendant. Well, they're not even uh, discoverable anymore. Um, oftentimes, we don't even know who these natural people are behind the content. So, um, all of these issues. Um, seem insurmountable. I'm happy to see that Guangnam thinks the courts are prepared. Uh, does everybody agree with that? <laughs> yes. May I uh, say a couple of things additional, please? For example, the issue of adverts and keywords is a big issue. And this raised the issue of, as well, of, of forum shop, uh, shopping. For, for example, there was a big case in Peru again, between the most important uh, commercial airline of South America, that is LATAM, okay, that uh, had a problem with Google because they were selling the word LATAM, that is a registered trademark for them. The Peruvian unfair competition, okay, first, the trademark law said this is not an issue of ourselves because this is not within the framework of our trademark law, okay? Well, sounds interesting. So the kid went through unfair competition as it happens in, in South Korea. And the court said that keywords and adwords are not trademarks and are free to be used by whoever uses them. And that was really the problem because they were selling the adword and the keywords to a competitor of LATAM. And, and the decision of Peru, which I don't agree, is completely uh, on the other side of what the Spain had said, that you have to protect keywords and, and, and adwords as somehow being trademarks. And, uh, and this raises the issue of form shopping and where uh, and, and the need of some, some, some kind of a harmonization in this matter. But anyway, at the very beginning, there will be conflicts in, in this matter. And, 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 and these uh, will pose for judges a big, big problem <laughs> because before the, I don't know, the, 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 the metaverse committee in the world intellectual property <laughs> <laughs> the first meeting, second meeting, fifth meeting, twentieth meeting, things will will move into some kind of a direction. So I, I insist that judges will have a big responsibility, and forums like this. And I, I encourage INTA to work in this particular direction will be very important because harmonization somehow and the discussion of cases that will be coming and arising in the next months, months, I don't say years, <laughs> months or weeks or days, we will have to discuss this matter at some point. And INTA might be a good forum to informally discuss and exchange ideas of what is going on. Otherwise, it will be a chaos, uh, in particularly the, the, the trademark field. That's what I wanted to say. Let's take the issue of intermediary uh, liability. And I think that will be a major issue when we come into metaverse and uh, non-fungible tokens. Uh, different countries and different courts have adopted an entirely different approach. Some countries are saying hands-off approach with regard to intermediary liability, while countries like India are trying to adopt 
uh, greater accountability of the intermediary. So uh, there is going to be a conflict. And one will have to deal with this issue at some level. How it is to be dealt with, uh, there may be various views, how it is to be dealt with to avoid conflict of laws. The same issue may arise simultaneously in different courts all over the world. Would it be possible to have a joint hearing, although the courts will have to give independent rulings, but can they hear uh, the same issue where one of the parties is common jointly and then decide it separately, but they must have the benefit of the, uh, of the view of the other country as well, available to them, and then take a reasoned decision. See, because we may be deciding uh, in silos, you know, uh, without considering a facet or an argument which is advanced uh, by another uh, party in another jurisdiction. How do you deal with it? So there are a lot of complications and the legislature will have to step in to resolve this issue at some particular point, unless until uh, globally there is a consensus uh, on some basic principles which have to be adopted or the approach that has to be adopted with regard to these issues. Yes, I would agree. And there are also these new kind of questions how you deal with the interoperability uh, in between the NFTs, which are in different metaverse? Is it uh, something that you respect as uh, ownership right on one of the metaverse or on all of them? Uh, do you have a transversal ownership right? Then how long does it exist? Uh, for example, if one of these words uh, finally stops to exist for, I don't know, economic reasons, uh, how you get uh, back your money, and if it's a trademark which is registered only as a valuable asset on the metaverse, uh, what does it mean? Is it a new kind of end of life of a trademark? So I think the questions are quite interesting. Yeah, just what you just raised, Andre. So is, let's say, a different platform considered a different jurisdiction? Can you have a right in one and not the same right in the, does that transfer to, you know, where does interoperability stop? And then as Manwan was saying, if you have one court deciding that you may not use a certain sign or symbol um, in its jurisdiction in the metaverse, and the user continues and simply claims, well, I'm not using it in India, I am located in Country X and the metaverse is for me consists of Europe. Yeah. So I am not using it in India. The, the fact that people can access it from India is nothing I can control. So all of these questions um, kind of lead back to the discussion we had previously of the lack in harmonization, which I think is going to become so much more um, critical in this kind of uh borderless and 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 less let's say uh territoriality less space this is very interesting what you are saying because i'm just thinking now uh, aloud of a situation let's imagine so a global metaverse which is accessible from india from us from brazil from europe and a person would own this metaverse only by or oh, prepare a product which is trademark, which on the metaverse will always stay limited to the European territory, where it would not be an infringement of anything, but really would be an infringement of a trademark in the US, in India, in, in Brazil. What does it mean? Can he have this defense of saying, look at the metaverse, I'm not going out of the territory? It would be an interesting question. But consumers in Peru will be able to see the advertisements and we'll be able to 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 buy the products or things like that. The fact that <laughs> so it's, it's, exactly. a, it's really complicated. Have you come across any of this, uh, any of these technologies in your in your past cases? Let's say, Elizabeth, or maybe even in your current practice. I know that there was the one case we talked about NFTs for player cards in Italy. So there was already at least one prominent case uh, on on this kind of issue. To add to what Fanon said, here in Brazil, we had uh, an, an administrative decision for the about the Debus case, but it was not. It was only by our PTO. It was since I know it was it hasn't gone to the to the courts yet. I think that it will come to court someday 
but it hasn't at this point. We only have a decision by our PTO and it was against doubles that it is not patentable. AI cannot be reinvented. Well, I think in the US, the Davos case was twofold. It was not only about the question whether the AI could be the inventor, but also whether the creation could be the subject of copyright protection. Yes. So it's sort of both sides of yes. that coin that is being discussed. Yes. That's yes the, the discussion here in Brazil, they are trying to, to we, we have protection by patents for that kind of, of stuff. So the discussion is, uh, is if it is patentable or not. We don't have discussions about uh, copyright here, about the doubles. Uh, also, I am wondering how to impose the injunction in Metaverse. Well, the whole the whole question of the enforcement is, I think, another huge block of issues. Um, because there again, the question is, do we have specific enforcement only in the virtual world? And how does that how does that even what does that even look like? Should we maybe create a virtual court for these issues? If I may, mm -hmm. yes, that's a big issue. The Spanish court, for what I understand, said that keywords and in the particular case of keywords and, 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 and AdWords, they forbid uh, to be sold in Spain. <laughs> They're sold <laughs> in other countries. <laughs> That's as simple as that. I would try to find the Peruvian decision and the Spain decision, Spanish decision, unfortunately, it's in Spanish, and I will send it to you. But you can use uh, AI to translate. AI to translate. <laughs> <laughs> I will send it to you soon. Okay, I will find both. Yeah. But it's a problem, unfortunate. It, they might be simple, good, good, goodwill, good declarations, and without substance. That's a big, big thing. AI is a great translator. <laughs> yes, it's ChatGPT. It's better than Google Translator. Well, that's yes, try good. it. That's another legal issue. Yes, it's very good. Uh, well, I was wondering, considering <clears throat> Andre and Elizabeth particularly, that there has been, the, you know, the, there has been an, a new edition of the Nice classification that took some of the some of the necessary changes into account. Um, this seems to be, I'd say a confirmation of one way to address this, right? You have to have some some sort of a global or at least a regional definition of certain terms. I mean, that's that's a good first step into uh, resolving some of the some of the misunderstandings and some of the disputes. Um, so now everybody knows this is how you have to describe your NFT applications, etc. So one of the thoughts we had for some of the other topics was whether we whether it it would make sense to have a treaty um, identifying some of these issues, defining them, and maybe also laying out uh, the let's say the venue and the 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 correct court to address in these cases. Is that a realistic proposal to have say WIPO step in? I might think that we are really just at the beginning because uh, even for the misclassification, as far as I understand, for example, there is no uh, mention of changing in classes. It's just the adding in the alphabetical order, uh, even though some discussions were uh, about whether we are so far in this new technology that maybe classes should be added. It's not, uh, in my understanding, a general opinion that this shall be done. The second thing is, um, we, we see it here in our court that we are just at the beginning. The, the cases will simply start to come and they will be coming in big numbers. I, I think there are some uh, global analyzes that in 2026, some 25% 
of people will be staying at least one hour per day on, on Metaverse. Uh, I, I know that as you had the declaration on the future of internet, for example, as a treaty where uh, the European Union, the US was discussing the, the future of internet, we are not far away of um, having a thought that this might uh, have some specific uh, wallets like for Metaverse or, or some other, other, other things, yeah. So lots of issues, and I think everyone agrees for the time being, it's going to be some fallback positions, like on the on the personal side, it's going to be judge-made law a lot. And in my opinion, also somebody mentioned it earlier, um, until we have specified laws and sort of amendments to those laws, I feel like unfair competition is going to play um, an outsized role in the future in some of these cases, as long as we cannot define the quality of rights and the scope of protection in the new technologies, this is going to be a big, big um, fallback option in many countries, I think. Iris, if you, I would suggest you to use your influences within INTA and uh, try to, to make this issue to be discussed thoroughly within uh, Thoroughly. Yes. So we have, as you may know, and I think I circulated this at some point, we have two white papers out on NFT and the metaverse. And many, many of the issues we've we've discussed today were are being raised in those white papers. Obviously, we don't have the answers yet either, but these are these are the issues that um, trademark and IP professionals have identified um, throughout. So we we definitely in different committees, we are looking at these issues and they fit, of course, perfectly into the, the broader themes, let's say, of enforcement, anti-counterfeiting, non-traditional marks, famous and well-known marks protection. Um, so different teams will, will certainly be taking a look at these issues. Um, but at the end of the day, this is just, let's say, the theory and the, the, the thought process. Um, the real cases where brand owners are now taking action, let's say the Birkin, the Meta Birkin case or the Nike case or other cases that are that are coming to the surface now, they 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 are raising these issues with sometimes with intermediary courts that don't have much experience in IP cases. And so the question is what quality are these decisions going to have and how are they going to be enforceable? And I think that's sort of an immediate concern that, uh, let's say, intellectual capacity and, and like academic discussions um, will, will, not, will not solve. Yes, you're right. Uh, I think, uh, as you rightly put it, collaboration and communication are needed across the jurisdiction uh, to avoid the conflicts that we are foreseeing in the very near future. Uh, and this is absolutely essential to ensure that business can happen all over the world. It's not just protection of IPR rights. People will not know how to conduct their businesses in the near future. That will be a big problem. And the other, so therefore, the solution is only on agreeing on some minimum uh, cross jurisdictional standards. Now, how will that be achieved uh, is a difficult question to answer. Uh, it can be done by various ways by having uh, FTAs or uh, you know some convention on IPR, international convention on IPR. So that's the only way forward as of now. Yes, and yes. if I may, I, I mm -hmm. would also agree on the point that uh, we see on some examples that maybe the regional approach might not always be sufficient because if you take the DSA DMA, which is currently in Europe, you probably uh, also uh, know that there were some American companies uh, which decided not to market a certain new product uh, for the social medias, not being assured of having, let's say, all the details already uh, as uh, the European law expects that. And uh, it might happen also if there is a regional um, legislation for metaverse so that's that's really something where the global approach would be probably indispensable because 
how can you have a metaverse company which will i, I think now of any of the 150 or the existing metaverse company uh, which will have to deal with all the laws globally there is such a difficulty to be in every detail um, that maybe you still will not be able to do it so we will see Yes, and I'm I'm specifically also thinking of Manmohan, the case that you had presented on, where essentially courts in one jurisdiction decide and then essentially try to enjoin a court from another jurisdiction on deciding. So I feel like without a global regulation, we're going to have more of that. We're going to have courts trying to set standards in one case and saying the plaintiff is is enjoined from going to another court in yeah. another jurisdiction um which which would kind of be the negative effect of this this borderless activity um so like andre was saying regional or local regulation just will not do the type of subject matter justice in this case pun intended um so th that's that's where we really need to to look across the borders. And I always come back to The Hague, right? We we weren't even able to agree on having IP titles and judgments enforced across borders. Now it's taking it even a step before where you are talking about the enforcement in, in a borderless marketplace um, that doesn't even have a country affiliation or a court affiliation or anything of that sort. And if I may add, we are not even able to find a consensus on platform liability in our current two-dimensional marketplace. Mm -hmm. and now we are talking about liability of whoever operates the metaverse, um, this metaverse or the one next door or whichever. So it has just become so much more complicated in very little time. <laughs>